Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name's Emma Fave, and today's video is absolutely wild. This is the closest thing to making watercolor my job. I got to paint and chat with the wonderful actress and director Bryce Dallas Howard. So a quick little backstory because this is just amazing. Um, about a year ago, I had noticed that she had followed me on Instagram as well as a bunch of other artists in our little community. And I reached out to her and she had recently taken up watercolor. She's become totally obsessed and has fallen in love with the medium. So I reached out, we had been chatting back and forth. And recently I asked her if she would like to be in a YouTube video of mine. And she said yes, which is absolutely crazy. So today we're going to be painting something from her new movie that's coming out in February. It's called Argyle. She's going to be talking a little bit about it, um, but it's a really fun painting and I have provided a template that you can trace in the description below. So make sure you check that out and then you can paint along with us and we would love it if you would share your work. You know, you can hashtag Argyle the movie, you can tag Bryce, you can tag me. Um, it's just so much fun. It's this cute little cat from the movie, which we will talk about. Um, but I don't want to chat anymore. This is crazy. Career highlight, Bryce, this video. Amazing. Anyway, let's just jump in and get started. Hi, this is Hi. like... Sorry, this is like highlight career moment for me. So <laughs> I'm gonna fangirl for just a second. Just get it out of the way, just because. But this is how I feel. Just like, get ready for it yourself as well. But yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm just. First of all, I, I can't even believe it. Honestly, I have been a fan of yours for a long time. So when I saw your name like pop up on my Instagram, Bryce Dallas Howard is following you. I almost crapped my pants. I was just like is this real? Let's look at her profile. I had to see if you were real. I was like, there's no way. Like I've, I loved you in the help. That's when I first saw you, you know, we're big fans of Jurassic world over here. Your episode of, um, black mirror was the only one I watched twice. Cause that's not, a, that's not the type of show you watch twice. But no, I, episode, yes, I understand. Right. But your episode was so well done. That's the <laughs> only one I've watched twice. So like, this is kind of a surreal moment for me. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So thank you so much for joining me. Honestly, this is wild. No, Emma, thank you so much. And, and you know, it's it's similarly like when when you, after I followed you and stuff like that, and then you reached out to me, I was just like, oh, oh my God. so exciting. And, and, and watercolor in the last, a uh, couple of years has become such a such an important part of my life and your channel has been you know a big big has played a huge role in that and that's crazy um, you know just I'm I'm just so grateful for all the you know all the incredible free tutorials that you've created out there for folks who who because like in the beginning you know you 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 might not necessarily be like oh yes I'm joining a patreon oh yes I'm signing up for the, like the long course or whatever mm -hmm. it is you're just sort of dabbling yeah and um and just the you know the curriculum that you've created essentially on your channel is so comprehensive and so warm and inclusive and beautiful and um and i i also like i've met other wonderful like watercolor artists like through your channel as there's well. such an amazing community of us like honestly and we're all so supportive and loving to each other it's it's such an amazing community to be a part of so I'm just, I'm like, so glad to see you here part of it now too. And like, when I see you open new supplies and like nerd out, I'm like, yeah, she's just like me. This is so cool. <laughs> oh, I mean, just, just absolutely freaking out. And, oh, yeah. and I, um, and I'm, I'm very excited because I can like show you how loved your supplies are. I have, I have a lot of your supplies that you were so incredibly generous to send um, and, uh, and I just like your, your brushes are extraordinary. They're my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite round brushes in the world. Oh, like so absolute happy. favorite. Really? Favorite. Number okay. One. Number <laughs> one. And it's just like, it, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's just very special also getting to know the person behind these materials, you know, and, and how For much sure. care and love you put into 
everything that you create and um and you know like and everything is also just like so aesthetic and beautiful yeah. <laughs> and you know this is this all very well loved. And, oh, I'm and so glad. That makes me so happy because so much work does go into it. And like when you're launching anything, I'm sure you understand. You're just like, oh my God, please people like it. Just like it. Just like, let it be enough. Yeah. yeah. So I'm no, so happy to hear that. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I've, I, and I'm not the only one too, like behind the scenes, a, a lot of, a lot of folks online absolutely love not just your channel, your brushes as well. And it's sort of like these brushes and Christy Rice brushes are like, yes. you yes. that and you're like, like set, you're all good to go. Yeah. And I noticed you had a Christie's painter's pot too. Yes. I have Christie's <laughs> yeah. I see, I see that. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, so we're going to be painting something from your new movie that's coming out so soon which is so fun. I saw the trailer before I knew you were even in it. And I was like, oh, this looks, this looks cool. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's Bryce. I know her. I, I talked to her. And I'm like, this is so cool. So I'm hoping that my husband and I can sneak out for a date night soon to go see it. Um, they're very far and few apart, but we're hoping. What's, we what's exciting is that uh, the movie comes out February 2nd and it's, uh, and I recommend everybody, you know, see it right away. Cause it's also, there's a lot of twists and turns. And so you mm. kind of don't want to be behind that. You don't want to yeah. accidentally, um, you know, wait. And then, and then you hear a spoiler. So I recommend everyone see it right away, but yeah. then they see it again, Valentine's day weekend. Cause oh, it's, well, there you go. it's really, uh, Matthew Vaughn, the director wanted to make a, um, a, like a date movie, like a classic date movie. Nice. So, well, I'm excited because we haven't been able to go in a long time, but this is definitely a reason to. Um, so I'm very excited. And we're going to be painting the cat, the famous little cat. So this Chip. is Chip. This is, so Chip is, uh, is Claudia Schiffer's cat. Yes. And Claudia Schiffer, uh, Matthew Vaughn is Claudia's husband, and he's okay. the director of and producer of Argyle. And, um, and, and, and this is their cat, and he's such a charismatic, cool, just like he's an awesome cat. That's good. And, and there's a cat character in this movie, and so he's um, he's a nepo cat. Yeah. And <laughs> Matthew cast his own cat, and uh, and honestly, he steals the movie. No exaggeration. Awesome. So I love, I absolutely love that we're, um, that we're getting to paint him today. And I now follow Chip on Instagram. So. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I have some, I have some info. I have some info. So oh, nice. Chip, Chip is on Instagram. Yes. He's at Chip the cat. His Instagram is absolutely hilarious. Um, you could also follow at Argyle movie if you want to. Um, but something that's, that's really cool is uh, Claudia Schiffer, Chip's, Chip's mom um, did a book called Blue Chip, and it's called Blue Chip Confessions of Claudia Schiffer's Cat. <laughs> that's so and, funny. Uh, and it's absolutely adorable, and it's illustrated, and so kind of in homage to both Blue Chip and to Argyle, we're going to be painting, um, we're going to be painting the star of Argyle today. It's too funny. So have you drawn or painted a cat before? <laughs> No, no, I've never drawn or painted a cat before. So it's not necessarily my forte. It's not my strong point. I, I do, I have painted animals, but I will warn you that there, when you paint animals, there is always a really ugly stage where you get mm. halfway to like through it and you go, this is going to be awful. And most people give up because it just does not look like a cat. It does not look like anything, but I always say stick it out to the end till you put those last finishing details on it, like the little like black or little white highlights and then decide if it's ugly or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, animals are hard. Right. We're just going to wing it. We're going to we're going to try. I'm going to try to explain the best I can, but they're hard, but just don't give up in the ugly stage. And I'm hoping that people will watch this and then paint with us. And then they can maybe post it, you know, hashtag Argyle movie, which would be fun. You, you provided me with a traceable, which, which I'll, I'll put in the, the description. So people yeah. can join too, because this is going to be fun. And it's also just really great practice in painting animals. So, um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So you, you're ready to paint. Yeah, I'm going to ask you some watercolor questions because I am dying to know how you got started and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we'll yeah. do that while we paint. 
Yeah, so. and there's plenty, and and I have a heat gun and all that kind of stuff with me too. I would imagine. Okay, so I'm gonna flip my camera around, make sure you can see. Can you see my? Yes. 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 yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. Just want to make sure it's in frame. Yes. Okay. Okay. So for this cat, because it has like some fuzzy edges, we're going to paint with water inside this diamond. So this is going to be yellow right behind Chip. And then, but we're going to paint with water through the whole thing. So when we add some color to the cat, it's going to bleed out just slightly. So we get this kind of like fuzzy effect. Now it could go south, but we're, I'm going to show you how we fix it if it does. So take just like a, I have a size 12 and I'm just going to take some clean water and I'm just going to fill in the diamond area and the cat just going around the eyes. We want to make sure we don't wet the eyes for this. Don't wet the eyes. Should don't I start with you or should I watch? It's totally up to you. If you if you want to follow along in real time, you can. I also got to tell myself to slow down because no, I. No, no, no. Is fast. the um is the first? What's the first color going to be? You said yellow. Uh, the first one is actually going to be black. So a really light oh. wash of black. So we can get kind of like those gray stripes on the on the cat. Mm hmm. We're just filling it in with water. And if you need to like tilt your paper to the side to just kind of see that like little like sheen, the glistening water on it, just to see where you've put the water sometimes helps. Right. Okay, so not the eyes. Not the eyes. And right. you want to, want to put a decent amount of water, not... And then when you are done that, you're gonna, I'm going to take my size six just because I find when we have a smaller brush, we have a bit better control with water when we're doing like mm -hmm. wet on wet. And what we want is a controlled kind of um, effect with wet on wet. We don't want the, the paint to really disperse like crazy. We want it kind of controlled but fuzzy. This is where it gets a little tricky. So you're going to have like a size six kind of damp brush so it's not too too wet and a really light wash of black so I'm just taking I'm just my palette around tiny bit of black and just watering it down in my palette so it's a gray all right now for black yeah so take a smaller brush like a size six and you want it damp you don't want it dripping wet because the more water and paint you'll have on your brush when you place it down, like I'll show you if I have a lot of water and paint. Oops, that's way too much. A lot of water and paint on my brush. The bloom is going to kind of explode further, which we yeah. don't necessarily want. So I like to, when I put the paint on my brush, I actually like to tap it on my paper towel just a little bit first before I put it on the paper just to take any excess water or paint off of my brush so it doesn't go far. But what's going to happen is when we go around the edge, if you have less paint and water, you should get this kind of like fuzzy effect. The edge of the kitten. Yeah. So we're just okay. going to go around with a little bit. Yeah. And if it feels like there's still too much, just tap it on your paper towel. Like if it's bleeding too much outside the cat, and it will give it that fuzzy kind of furry edge to make it look like hair. I feel like Painting cat's hair is one of the most difficult parts or just animal fur in general. It's just a little tricky. Yeah, but it's good. This is a cool technique. I've never tried anything like this before. Perfect. And then you can start kind of going around the face a bit. And then Chip has these little kind of lines on his forehead. So if you start like from the forehead and then kind of move your way up like that. You'll get these like blurry little effects like that. I have a picture of Chip in front of me, so I <laughs> try to get the markings right. He's so darn cute. So stinking cute. Are you a cat person? I'm a cat person. I have three yeah. cats. Oh, do you? <laughs> nice. I grew up with cats. It's so funny. I grew up with cats when I was younger. And then 
um, like always had a cat when I was a kid. And now I have just have a giant dog, which I never had dogs growing up, but he's just the biggest, dopiest, loveliest, giant lap dog you could ever imagine. (laughs) That's the best. I did a, um, a documentary that's going to be coming out later this year on Disney plus called, um, pets. Oh yeah. (laughs) That's, that's how obsessed I am. Oh, that's fun. I'm just adding a little bit of darkness because it just felt like, yeah. And it will dry a little bit lighter too. So you can always just bring some of the darkness down towards the feet. You don't really see the feet in the, in the picture that much, but just kind of like this little V here. There would be a bit of darkness where the chest is. I'm just kind of, we can just make it a little bit darker down here. And then just the markings on the face, just because we don't want them to be so blurred out and like big. Again, just tap your brush on your paper towel to get rid of some of that excess water and paint. So you can do a bit more delicate markings. There's like some right by the nose here, right on top between the eyes, under the eyes a bit. There you go. And then try and bring some of the stripes kind of going down his arms, just from the his back kind of forward like that. So you can get that stripey kind of effect. And so this is the ugly part. <laughs> you know that I was talking about where you're looking at your thing going, yeah. this is crazy. I should stop. But oh, once probably. it all comes together with detail, it's just like magic almost. I had a lion tutorial that I did years ago. And someone in the comments actually said, you know, you got halfway and I thought it was absolute garbage. Like someone actually wrote this to me. (laughs) I was like, it just looked awful. But then it really came together at the end. I'm like, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) That's, I mean, it's true. I get what you're saying, but it was just so funny because it's it's true though. You just look at it and you go, oh my goodness, what is this mess that I'm creating? But (laughs) it it turns out. And then sometimes it doesn't turn out and that's okay too. Cause there's been plenty of times where I've painted things and they just don't turn out, but yeah, that's okay too. Sometimes they have a second life of some, as something else or like, yeah, for sure. Improve. You kind of go back and yep. I also feel like watercolor fairies, like visit in the middle of the night and make things kind of like nicer overnight. Yes. Fresh eyes the next day are always helpful as well. Totally. Sometimes you just need to walk away and then come back and, Take a look and go, oh, this isn't that bad. Mm-hmm. Where else are there? Oh my God. So funny. So cute. I'm looking at yours and being like, yours is so cute. Look at yours all those buttons. Oh, wait, I need to get more, more eye markings and stuff like that. Yeah. Just use a really tiny bit. Tap it on your paper towel because those ones are trickier. So you don't want them to go like everywhere crazy yeah okay so I think hmm trying to think so originally I did the yellow part while this was still kind of wet but I'm wondering if hmm, I think maybe we should let it dry a little bit and then we'll just kind of fade the yellow into the back all right okay so now I would take just some yellow like a primary yellow I don't even know which yellow is wit in my which in my palette place it around yeah the cat here and then as you get closer to the cat we want it to kind of fade into that gray not really overlap it too much so see as I'm coming closer I'm going to wash off my brush and I'm going to dry it on my paper towel a bit and I'm just going to 
blend out that edge. So it's not really like a, a like line. It's kind of blended out. If you see that a little bit, it can overlap a bit, but you don't want it so bright yellow. It just, we want it to kind of fade into a, a lighter yellow. So it blends a bit better. So I'm dying to know how did when did you start painting? July of twenty uh twenty two. I love I, that you remember. I was like the same. Like I remember mine was like May twenty sixteen. It's like life changing almost, right? You're it just is like, life changing. Yeah, <laughs> it is life changing. Um, yeah, no, I I had and and it was I I, I it was very interesting because. It was a response. It was like a stress response. I had mm -hmm. really randomly, my friend had given me um, a journal that she had gotten that she was like, oh, I, I don't need this journal. It's like, I like, do you want this extra journal that I have? Like journal kit that she had mm -hmm. bought. And, um, and I was like, yeah. And in the journal kit, there were colored pencils and I thought they were just regular pencils and they were, they were watercolor pencils. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I had never done watercolor before. And I was it, traveling with it and there was something very stressful that happened and I kind of like didn't know what to do with myself it was like one of those like <gasps> like intense like kind of terrible things and I had this my instinct was to kind of reach reach for my journal mm -hmm. you know to start writing and sort of working out like like emotionally <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything and, and I saw the colored pencils and then I saw that it was wa watercolor pencils. And so I, I went online and I watched a tutorial about watercolor pencils and, um, and just started. And it was like, it's all I wanted to do. Yeah. Like I didn't want to do anything else. I hear and, you. And, and, and it just, whenever I felt like anxiety or anything like that, I would just start painting and just instantly my whole system would, would kind of just regulate and, um, almost like, like, you know, when you work out or something like yeah. where you're, it shifts your, your kind of like chemistry, your body chemistry. Um, so anyway, it's just been, uh, and then, and then from there, I was very strict. I wouldn't let myself like get proper supplies until Christmas. Because <laughs> I was like, I loved it so much. And and so I knew like I had to like not get, I had to like learn more before I could earn the right to yep. buy a bunch of supplies in my head. And then, and then Christmas um, that year was a watercolor Christmas. And then, um, and shortly after that was when, was when I followed you and and a number of other folks. And, um, and that just like totally opened up my world on a whole other level. That's so fun. Um, yeah, no, it's been, it's been amazing. There's been a woman named Bindi Desai, who's um, yes. just absolutely fantastic. And Bindi is a um, special education teacher at a public school in um, Pennsylvania. And um, she's a very gifted watercolor teacher, very gifted and really knows how to, um, you know, well, her experience really has like taught her how to like teach on a very elite level, you know, sure. and, and, um, and so I, I started doing weekly watercolor classes with her and we're still incredibly close, incredibly, incredibly close. Did you and, find, how did you find her? Uh, same thing, just, just online. She has, um, she's like create underscore underscore, um, D. Yes. On Instagram, right? Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah. He has quite a, you know, quite a following and, um, a lot of fans and I was one of them. And, and when I followed her, she reached out and she was like, Hey, just so you know, I teach if, if you ever, ever want to, um, take a class and, and yeah, that was it. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Cause then I found her through you too, as well. And I started following her. I love it. It's just, we all just started following funny. each other. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's how it kind of goes. And, that's what's so beautiful about, about a community is like once, you know, a community that is inclusive, mm -hmm. once you're in it, it's not that you're, you're like no longer alone. Like there's like a lot of, 
there's just a lot of really wonderful people um, who practice watercolor. And it seems to be that, that like the connective tissue is that there is, there, there are real mental health benefits. Oh, for sure. I feel like the majority of people I've talked to, that's how we all kind of got started. We were going through something and then something drove us. Like, I think I was, I was scrolling Instagram and I was really into watching hand lettering and watercolor videos. Yeah. And that's what I was like, I want to try that. And then I like went to an art store and I bought like the cheapest, like kids watercolor set, like yeah. those cakey kind of kids yeah. watercolor pans. And I just took it home and I became obsessed where just like counting down the hours till I could go home from work so I could go and paint. Yeah. It was just so therapeutic and it just turned into the most incredible thing. It's the best. It's yeah. the best. I never would have thought that you know, at my, at my age, like, which is like, you know, I'm middle age and 42 is it, it, that there would be a hobby like this. I've mm -hmm. never, I've always been the person that's just been like, yeah, I don't like my, my work is my hobby. Like I don't yeah. have a hobby and I like started my family at 25 and all that kind of stuff. And so it's like, you know, just, just you, life is, life is full <laughs> with kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so to, to have this, uh, is, is an amazing gift that I really, really treasure. And it's one of the privileges of, of getting older is that mm -hmm. they get surprised. You get surprised yeah. by things that sneak up on you. It's like suddenly one day you like bird watching. You're like, yeah. What? You're like, I get it. <laughs> I get it now. Yeah. But believe yeah. it or not, the majority of people who follow my channel, at least my biggest range, like they're 55 to 85 years old where they have picked up a brush for the first time during retirement. And like, they're just like, I just started at 65. I started at 78. It's like, wow, it's amazing. I believe it. Yeah. It's never it. too late. So it's just, it's so, it's so cool. And I just love like your, your proof that is like you reach everywhere, you know, <laughs> like it's so cool. It's such a great community. Yeah. Um, okay. So while we're waiting for that part to dry, we can just like add little, the yellow to his eyes. Um, and don't worry about going over the little, uh, part in the center, because we can always go over that with black after, but just a little bit of yellow, a lighter. My guy might not be chip. My, my guy might be chips, scrappy, <laughs> uh, second cousin who yeah. isn't being raised by Claudia Schiffer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Love it. It's like, this is what happens when chip is raised by Claudia Schiffer. And this is what happens when chips isn't Aww. raised by Claudia Schiffer. <laughs> I tell you, once you put that little white highlight in the eye at the end, they become sweeter looking and less wow. scary. I promise. <laughs> I'm sure. A little bit like that. And then if you have like a darker yellow, like a yellow ochre, I would take that and just a little bit kind of like around the eye just so it's like a little lighter in the center and then darker around again this is, looks a little bit demonic but, but hey cats yep <laughs> who knows who knows part, part of what i love about them yeah we don't know who domesticated who yeah <laughs> <laughs> who's really in charge my husband describes me as a cat <laughs> And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> it's like, you like affection when you want it. <laughs> yep, yep. That's you know, you come to me when you need it. But you're, yep. otherwise, you're like, don't bother me. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Like, yeah, I am. I'm a cat. Okay, so let's take uh, like an ultramarine kind of blue. And we're just going to paint all of the outside. Cool. So this is like easy. We can chill. We can talk. And just kind of, whoa, that's really intense. But doesn't have to be too dark or anything. We're just going to try and paint it. And then we'll do like the Argyle pattern over top once it's dry. So would you say you have like a, a watercolor kind of style or go-to kind of painting that you love to just do to unwind? Um, yeah. Yes, totally. Um, I love to do uh, like to create abstract backgrounds mm -hmm. and then to like with ink draw flowers and botanicals and and all of that and then um and then kind of uh then you know fill it in from there 
Mm -hmm. Cause that's just, I do it on like, I'll like get a big piece of paper and I'll just divide it up and, and, and rip them up and then have them with me and kind of like yeah. at restaurants and stuff like that. Like oh, I'll, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'll take Christy Rice's palette cause it's really mobile. It's, nice. it's small and, um, and like no joke in a restaurant. So we're, we're, we're painting everything blue. Yeah. Yeah. Everything blue. Okay. Everything blue. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I just, I'll, I'll just like do, do that. Um, recently I also, I take a lot of classes with, um, this place case for making okay. that I love and they make, uh, they have handmade watercolors. Ooh. They're so beautiful. And then they have these wonderful classes, um, where you get to learn about, uh, you know, fine artists and then kind of study their work in the class. And then, um, and then you, you apply it in like a watercolor painting, basically. That's really so, cool. There's all these artists that I otherwise would never have necessarily, um, known about that are now like my favorites. Like, yeah. Emma off Clint is, is it's like, I found out about her through this class and, um, and I'm obsessed with her. And there was like a Georgia O'Keeffe class. And there's, I mean, just so, so many amazing ones. And so just, just getting to learn, mm -hmm. you know, and explore, like that's the phase that I'm in for yep. sure. Um, but I've also been really into uh, just kind of, I mean, honestly, anything graphic, like little graphic shape things. I love landscapes, but absolutely love landscapes. Um I just want to learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. And it's led me, it, it's led me to, to like learning, um, different forms, uh, and working with different mediums. Like right now I'm enrolled in a year long program, uh, called the Milan Art Institute. Oh, wow. You learn, um, fine art drawing, oil painting, obviously oh my goodness. Mixed media, all of that. And so, What's what's funny is that watercolor has now become like my refuge from from when it gets really hard with oil painting, which mm -hmm. is you know every minute. Um, I haven't even <laughs> tried oil painting yet. I, oil painting scares me. I haven't even tried it yet. Yeah, it's really um, um, it's it, it it's it's very different and it's very scary, but it is very uh, it, it's it's cool to get to to get to like at least to be, to be creatively adventurous, mm -hmm. to be creatively adventurous to me has been, has kind of opened up, um, a level of, of fun and courage that, uh, that I didn't know I had, but I do have to kind of like, I need to be learning in order to do it. Like I need to be like, have like a teacher kind of pushing me. And stuff. Okay. Okay. Let's make this cat look a little less creepy. <laughs> sure, I yeah that. right actually we're done no <laughs> can you imagine okay so I would take a smaller like a detail brush like a size two mm -hmm. um and then we're gonna take our our light wash of black again and we're just gonna start kind of defining the outside of this cat so with like little kind of hair like strokes we're just going to do like kind of go around, not even the whole cat, because we ha we can see kind of an outline, but just maybe like around like the ears a little bit, just these tiny little folded over ears, kind of just little strokes, maybe at the top of the head a bit, around the body. It doesn't have to be like one kind of straight line. You're just kind of picking areas. And this is how I get away with not drawing every piece of fur on animals. Yeah, I just cool. kind of pick little areas, you know, underneath kind of where the face gets a little bit rounder. And then those kind of inf infamous markings on their face. will just make a little bit darker. Like that. And just like a kind of like a little sketching motion. Really light <clears throat> pressure. I'll look at my picture again. Do 
down here between the legs, kind of where there's a bit more longer fur. And then some of those little stripey bits, you can just kind of bring them in like that. Sometimes what I also like to do is like, I'll take a bit of pigment on my brush or I'll just like dab my brush like this to break up the bristles. I know some people cringe. It's like, you're damaging them. No, you're fine. Um, or even do it on my paper towel bit. So it's really dry. And then it gives you kind of like this fur, like texture, which is very faint kind of scratchy look to the strokes. So it's like very faint. It's not a lot of paint, not a lot of water, but it gives you a nice kind of fur texture. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. And then if you take like um just a bit more black, you can go, or if you feel more comfortable with a black pen to go around the eyes. Ah, yeah. The pen sometimes is a little bit easier just so it's not as like shaky. Cause I always find I'm shakier with a brush doing the smaller detail. Oh, totally. So just the eyes, right? Yeah. Cool. For now, just around. And then you can even do the little kind of part in the center as well. And we'll outline the nose and all that stuff after. Forgot we got to do that little pink nose. Do you like find yourself painting from tutorials more often or just kind of winging it most days? Um, I will, if I'm trying to do something that is like a, like a thing, <laughs> oh, <laughs> or, or yeah. learning something, I'll do yeah. a tutorial, um, lots of tutorials. If I'm, uh, and then I have my sort of like just winging it things. My problem is that, I mean, I don't know if it's a problem, but it's definitely, I've noticed it, is that when I get stuck, I forget to like look at a reference mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm doing, when I'm doing my own thing. Um, and so I, I, that's why tutorials are so great because it's, you know, you're, you're being told step by step what to do. Yeah. And at the end of it, you're like, oh, that's how that's done. But, um, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely love to kind of do both. It's funny. I think when I started back in 2016, like Instagram videos were still 15 seconds at that point. So I was like watching like tiny mini like tutorials of people just painting. And like, I didn't find like the YouTube art community was there then. It kind of just like blew up over the past few years. And I'm just like, I would have loved to see all those tutorials when I started. I probably would have been even more obsessed but it's just so funny how it's evolved so fast and it's grown so much. Oh, so much. And it's, and there is so much out there and it really does like facilitate an extreme interest. Like, like there's, there's like, you can really, really, really um, find most, <laughs> most things that you're wanting to paint. Like you can, you can kind of Google it and you're like, you know, find the next one person who can help okay so let's let's start on the the pattern to make it argyle because it's looking a little not like that so if you grab a darker blue <clears throat> um, what size brush are you using maybe uh um maybe my size six whatever feels like the easiest to kind of get these shapes so like i'm gonna i think use indigo and you're just gonna start painting in these diamonds so are you going to take any of your supplies with you tomorrow on your trip it's like all i'm thinking about <laughs> what to pack? yeah i think i'm just going to be taking <clears throat> um, like the like watercolors and like a little bit of mixed media stuff and um and uh i probably won't be bringing any oil paints or anything i don't think that's going to travel do you ever paint outside no, I've never done like plain air painting. I mean, I, yes, at like my like sun soccer games. Yeah. 
but um but I've never done it like like actually you know you definitely like, should honestly that I feel is one of the most relaxing things that I it's bet it. just so nice to even just like pick a tiny little like a flower outside or a cloud and just kind of sit there and just paint the one thing love that it's so nice I did it in a park a couple well, months ago because it's winter. Do you have a favorite brand of paint, like watercolor paints or anything you've tried that you really liked? Um, yeah, I I love um two handmade paint companies. Mm. I like the um like I definitely love Christy Rice's palette mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and um I love a uh, case for making. Okay. Which is handmade watercolors and stone ground paints. Oh, I haven't tried that's um Sarah Simon has a yep. yeah, I love her too. She's I've been cool. eyeing those and I'm like, you don't yeah. need more watercolors. <laughs> it's, it's what I what I really love about them is um whatever whatever they do to it, it's like very you know how handmade watercolors are often like very grainy and a little inconsistent yeah mm -hmm. um, there's just not those inconsistencies mm. at all like there's a smoothness and um and what I love about case for making is it's their colors are 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 really 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 like con their convenience colors are very um like weird in the best way mm. like very unique and um and I just, I think it's, you know, they have color and, and, and like, they have this like really beautiful color that is like so great for, um, landscapes and it's called climate change is real. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 there's also like, that's what I love about the ethos of the company. It's a shop, um, based out of San Francisco, you know, it's very, it, it's a little radical, uh, which is wonderful. And then they have those great those great classes as well. So it's, is that they're like a go-to for you in terms of like the consistency or you're like Windsor Newton? Or I, I feel like I, I gravitate towards Windsor Newton the most, just because that is what I started with after my children's palette. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a workshop and uh, the girl was supplying um, Windsor Newton Cotman. So which is like the student grade tubes. Yeah. And I started yeah. off with those right after like my kids palette and I was obsessed and I only upgraded to professional watercolors because um a viewer on my YouTube channel was like I don't like these paints anymore but I have a bunch of the tubes of the professional Windsor Newton do you want them and I was like uh yes <laughs> so she sent me like a ton because she wanted to switch to a different brand and that was the only reason why I started with professionals is because I, like I was like I, I don't know if I can justify this much money but when she gave them to me, I was like, okay, love these. And then I just nonstop. But I do, I'm not going to lie. The perks of my job is that I do get to test out many different brands. They send me like, Paul Rubens is a surprisingly nice brand. Like they've sent me their tubes and I put them in a palette, which I tend to go to a lot. Mm. I really enjoy those. Um, I just got some Shinhan watercolors, which are from Korea. And then... Um, they also have really nice gouache too. So I just tried My Mary Blue, mm -hmm. which are the Italian brand, which are nice too. Not my favorite. I find they have a bit more like granulating colors, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but they're also nice. It's so hard when you have so many professional brands. I'm like, they're all very similar and they're just, they're all nice. But I've tried some like nice um, handmade watercolors too. that are pretty good. Yeah. There's just too many watercolors, not enough time. <laughs> It's really true. And it's so, it's so wonderful. Like just the fact that folks are kind of getting into, I don't know what it would be called, milling their own watercolor yeah. paints and stuff and kind of, I mean, it's so just, just working with the different textures and different colors. It's so therapeutic. I, just, I can't imagine though, the amount of time and energy that goes into making those pans of watercolor, like just the handmade stuff is just oh amazing. Absolutely. Mm. Right. And then for the yellow part, you just need like a yellow ochre. 
color and we'll do that top one. How did you make the decision to um, do this full time, like moving from teaching? So I was teaching and then I went on mat leave with my son. And honestly, the the pay didn't make sense for me to go back to teaching and then put my son in daycare. Yeah. I was just like, I will basically be breaking even <laughs> to yes. put my son in daycare and have someone else take care of him all day while I take care of other kids. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm going to be stay at home mom. And it wasn't an easy decision because I, I did love work, but I was just like, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to stay at home with him. And then, you know, motherhood was just, it was crazy. It kind of like rocked my world. And, you know, you're just, you're full time for someone else's needs. And so I found during nap times, I would escape to my office and I would start painting. And then I started filming and kind of just teaching little tutorials here and there and putting them on YouTube. My husband worked um, for another YouTube company where he was shooting YouTube videos. So he kind of had an, an in on how to do it. Yeah. So he kind of set me up and, and taught me and then monetized my channel. And one day he looked at, it, he's like, Emma, you're making money. And I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I can make money doing this. What? Like, this is no way. And he's like, if you start putting out more videos, more content, like a few times a week, you could, you could be making this a side hustle. And so I was like, you know what, let me just give it a try. And I filmed strictly during nap times and a lot of the earlier videos, you'll see Noah as a baby in my intros because he had woken up from nap time and I only had that time to do it. So he would be in my intros and everything oh. else was shot during nap time. And I just, I was putting out three videos a week and it just exploded over time. And then I, it just became a thing. And now that's, that's how we, cause now he, Matt does my editing for my videos now. So we've kind of combined and made it a family business. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's how we pay our bills now. <laughs> like oh it's God. just exploded. And I'm like, how, how is this my life? How, how do I get to paint? Also stay home with my kids, which is huge. And then, you know, just get to work with my family and make a, a decent living. I do miss teaching at times, but I just get to go volunteer in the kids' classes when I miss it. I've been a few times and I've taught watercolor to Noah's class, <clears throat> which was so fun. But yeah, it just made sense. But now it's kind of like, what's the next step? I, I wrote the book. I wrote a book, done boxes. Now I just want to teach in person, I think. Yep. That's what I want to do. I want to teach actual physical classes. I mean, that's going to be great. Yeah. But How I definitely... do, you find, do you, um, in terms of like keeping like it being sort of like a family business now, um, in terms of like, you know, you and your husband working together and everything and him facilitating, um, you know, aspects of it, does it, it is, is that really amazing? Is it a mixed bag? Is it um, like something you never thought would happen? Is it, does it make perfect sense given your dynamic? Like, how does that go? It does. It's, it's definitely amazing just because you can be so honest <laughs> with each other yeah. and you don't have to tiptoe necessarily. You know what I mean? Just be like, no, that doesn't work, you know, and not worry too much about hurting your, your Partners. co-workers feelings. <laughs> Be like, nope, this doesn't work. Let's do it again. And they also kind of know your own kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, okay, Emma. But yeah. it's just, it's it's nice also just because his field of work before was um, through YouTube, through editing videos, creating videos. So he knows all the ins and outs and he is the tech guy. Like he gets it. So it's just, it makes perfect sense yeah. for us, which is really nice. And then once the kids are, you know, both in school, it'll be nice to really grow it together to a different level. I don't know what that is yet, but <laughs> something. It'd be great. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. It would be fun. Hopefully get out of this closet for an office <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Expand just a little bit, just by a couple of feet. Um, okay. okay. Let's paint the little, the little pinky nose on this cat. This poor guy, just a pinky kind of color. Do you find yourself enjoying acting or directing more? It's it's really both. Yeah. I love both. Yeah. I love both. I I directing is probably what I'm most um 
like naturally suited for because mm -hmm. I, I do, I get a little, I get a little like, um, like embarrassed with attention and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so being, being at the center and being seen as an actor is, is definitely not like, I always related more to the crew okay. um, than to the folks who were like on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, but I also loved it. I, I like, I love, I love acting in it and it allows me to be there and learn. It, mm -hmm. it, it facilitates me being um, really like in rooms with storytellers that I learned so much from. Mm -hmm. And then I'm able to apply it as, um, or at least attempt to apply it as a, as a filmmaker. So it's, it, for me, it's just, it's totally connected. And I, 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 I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want one without the other. I yeah. love both acting and acting, but in different projects. I, yeah. I, I was going to say, I'm like, have you directed anything you've been in? I don't think I would want that. I, I did a short film called Soulmates. That was okay. one minute long. Yeah. All it is, is feet. Oh. It's just, and it's my feet, my husband's feet, grandparents' feet, kids' feet. And um, it's basically the story of a family from birth through death, just through their feet. Oh, wow. And, um, and it was something that I like shot at my house and, and, um, it was basically, I was testing some prime lenses for Canon. And so it was because I, I have like a, like my side hustle for a long time has been focusing on emerging technology oh, wow. as a film. And, um, and so I, we were, we were like shooting this and I was the feet. And I remember there's a moment where I was standing in front of the camera and I couldn't like look behind the camera mm -hmm. and I was like craning my neck to try to see the monitor. And I was like, how does everyone work like this? Yeah. How do you do that? Just my feet. Yeah, <laughs> it was just my feet. So, you know, it's it's. I'm not saying that it's off the table at all. I think it would be, um, you know, for the right thing, like potentially, mm -hmm. potentially something that that you know I would I would I would want to endeavor upon. But um, but it's not like what I what I crave is to direct actors, not to mm -hmm. direct. Um, because when I'm acting, what I crave is to be directed, nice. you know, director. Yeah. So anyway. That's so cool. It's yeah. cool to have the experience on both sides. Yes, that's so. exactly how I feel. Probably exactly. makes you a better director in a lot of senses and even a better actor just to like, understand. I mean, I, it certainly opens my eyes and mm -hmm. I do a lot. And um, and I would like to think that, you know, it's, it's kind of, God, and then also just working with such great actors as well and learning mm -hmm. from them and how you know how it applies to not only my own work as an actor but then my work as a director you're, so you're not just learning from the director you're learning from absolutely everyone um so anyway that is I so, love cool. It. so cool I love it okay so paint the little pink nose I think and then we just like add detail and then that's it awesome 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 Like that? Yep. Perfect. All right. Let's do the detail with the pen, I think. So we got to go around his nose to kind of outline that. And create a mouth so it doesn't look weird. And then little, little dots there. All right, the whiskers. Whiskers, and you can just kind of really quickly not press too hard, just so it's kind of like a bit more of a faint mm -hmm. whiskery. Like that. Perfect. And then sometimes I'll just add, like, just for extra little detail of darkness, just little lines of the fur with the black. Just in like parts, or maybe there's body parts kind of meeting each other, like the ear here, the top of the head.
I love taking pen and going over Mm -hmm. watercolor. It's like, it makes it look so intentional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I always planned for this and it's, it's usually correcting all the things that I'm like, I'm like, oh, I forgot to put something there. <laughs> and then I can just use the pen. it just helps define it so much more too it looks so good yeah. so cute <laughs> looks awesome okay and then you're gonna take a small like detail size two brush and then we're gonna get out our white we're going to do that, the white stripes on the argyle pattern. And then we're almost done. I'll tell you something that Sarah Simon taught me that is like so crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's not so crazy, but I, I it blew my mind in terms of the, the bleed proof white. So I before was always fighting like, okay, it's, it's like essentially this bleed proof right white should last for the entirety of my life. Like it's so yeah. like so much in there. And I was I was talking about it um uh drying up and Sarah mentioned that um that it's uh I guess like graphic artists or, or whoever like print artist I I can't remember the name, but who use it, they keep water in there. Oh always a lot. Huh. And it keeps it moist. I was going to say, yours looks so much nicer than mine. <laughs> Mine's all it's chunky. and supposed to keep like a, a solid amount. Yeah. Oh. Of water in there always. That's awesome. And well, it keeps I it guess I need to do that. I've had this for months and months. And it's because um, Sarah mentioned that to me. Isn't that so interesting? Yeah. And it makes it like really like the consistency is really. Yeah, mine's definitely I've I've definitely uh, sprayed it with water a bunch and then like stirred it once before because it does dry up really fast. But that's, yeah, no, it's like just keep water in like, like a like a couple centimeters of mm -hmm. water. Oh, interesting. I got to do that. So with really light pressure and just try your best. Like it doesn't have to be a straight perfect line by any means. But you're just going to go straight through the pattern, even through the yellow, too. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Okay, moment of truth. Does not have to be perfect, though. Yeah, Never does. Is. Poor kid. Or I wonder, I I wonder I, like, I wonder, I don't know if that would work. If you feel more comfortable, let's see. Sometimes it bleeds through the ruler. Or do you have, like, it? it's totally up to you. Like, you can just freehand it and just, like, have it. It doesn't have to be straight at all. Um, oh, my God. Um, Here's a little ruler. I might just see if it works. Draw a few lines so that I'm not... Oh, you know what I could have used too? I could use like a Sakura pen or something, but. Oh yeah. If you have like a white gel pen. But does it work well enough? The jelly roll. We will soon Same. find out. The one I usually, do I even have it anymore? Mine are all dried up now, but when they were new, they are the Uniball Signo oh, white yeah. gel pens. I found those were really good. I'm going to paint it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to paint it with a free hand and just be okay with whatever the results are. The white is a really nice detail. It is. It kind of like brings it together. Yeah, it makes it a pretty thing. Remember, we got to go the other way too. Oh, geez, Louise. Do you find a similarity between like visual arts for yourself and watercolor and just expressing yourself during that and acting or does yes. it feel kind of totally opposite? No, no, it's, it's, 
it like all the same tenants apply. Like what you think is a mistake ends mm -hmm. up being the happy well, accident. Yeah. You know, what um volume matters. Like just mm -hmm. keep just keep doing it. Like mm -hmm. it's you're not the get out of your the the uh, you know get get into the right side of your brain, get into flow state, you know. Mm -hmm. Um it's it definitely it, it 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 definitely definitely applies and i think i think whenever you do something creative you're you're practicing those like the muscles of surrender mm -hmm. and um and and also practicing not personalizing the yeah. work not being like oh i am bad because i did x y or z it's like For sure. oh this is like i gave maximum effort this is what happened. I'm here for it. Like, you're like, all good. All I good. agree. And I love that mentality. And I think that's what I try and teach a lot too, is just like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like this idea of perfect that we have in our head where, you know, mine has to look like yours or it has to look exactly like the tutorial. It's like, there's just so much growth to be had and appreciate every step of the way. Kind of just, you know, see what happens and enjoys. And a lot of the time when you think you made a mistake, you've actually like, like you said, a happy accident, you know, just you've you've learned something or created something that you didn't realize would happen through those mistakes but i love um, it i i have there's a phrase that i not to get like too deep with things but i sort of like what you know what's the purpose of life and all of this and i heard i heard this voice is the only time this happened to me in my life mm -hmm. and i i like I'll, I'll never forget it as long as i live it um the voice said the purpose of the human experience on earth is to move through obstacles with grace. Hmm. And, and then it, I was driving towards a sunset at the time. Yeah. And as you do that, there will always be a sunset. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this is the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. And so it's just like, it's not that it's, this is supposed to be easy. Like these are obstacles, but can mm -hmm. you move through them with grace, you know, a sense of humor, compassion, all of that um, for yourself and others. And then just see kind of what happens, you know, and, and more often than not, I think, I think we get surprised. I love that. You know, it's not, and yeah. it's nice to, to be able to kind of surprise yourself, but it is, it, it, it's, it is crucial also to learn, you know, mm -hmm. like it doesn't mean that, that just because you're picking up a brush, that it's all going to be happening and yep. that you need, what you're doing is amazing. Like it's, it's training is, is really important in the, the apprenticeship and, and, you know, mentorship model and all of that, like that has been so a part of how human beings have passed on this tradition of craft mm -hmm. and creative, um, and kept it going. And so, you know, just you doing your channel and, you know, your book and your boxes and, and the ways in which, you know, your Patreon, the ways in which you, you create community mm -hmm. and pass on the things that you've learned yourself. It's, it's, you know, it's being part of the, the human tradition. The last and, little detail yes. is a little tiny white in the eye, just a little dot. I always find that makes it look the cutest. You put it over the black? Just a or... little bit over the black, just so it kind of like... So just a tiny bit. Oh, cool. It's like a little round dot, sort of. Yep. Just a little highlight, and I always find it just makes it look that right. much cuter. There. Did I do it right? Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's it. I love it. I love it. Oh, you my gosh, you. Emma. Thank you so much. Yeah. I hope that was fun. <laughs> So much fun. Ridiculous amount of fun. Oh, good. I'm so happy because I, I honestly, I had such a good time. That was so much fun. It's just so nice to talk to someone <laughs> that's I like know. or a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, I, I feel the same way. And just, you know. you know, I'm so glad that we got to do this as well, because you've just been so supportive over, you know, the last year with this, this journey that I've been on with watercolor. And, and I just, I, I, I love getting to do this with you. I, I, I love I, it. It's, it's honestly definite career highlight moment for me. So thank you honestly for taking the time out of your crazy busy schedule, because I know things are nuts and it's just so nice that you took the time and your team and everything to kind of just 
make time for me and paint together and so much fun. I'm so excited for people to see this and I'm so excited to see your movie. Thank you. Yes. Really? So yes. Argyle coming out in theaters, February 2nd. Uh, it's a awesome, fun, incredible movie. Great date night movie. Yes. So exciting. Everyone. Absolutely. Um, and, and I'm, yeah, I'm just, I, I, I'm really hoping that folks download the traceable and yes. they get their template for this. And I want to see people create their own Argyle chip. Like yeah. I really, really, really want to see that. And, and for folks to tag me in it and obviously to tag you, I mean, it would be yeah. so fun to see just everyone do this, bring their own kind of flair and perspective to it. Um, I'm, I'm so excited. Me too. Awesome. That was, that was so much fun. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. No, this is, this is an absolute blast and I'm so happy that I have this. This is like, look how cute that looks though. I love it next to my Argyle sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. It's so great. So oh, good. I, I love it. I love it. I don't know if I can give it to Claudia and Matthew because I really like it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. This was an amazing opportunity and it's so nice to paint with someone who I've been a fan of for a long time and to hear that she's a fan of mine was crazy. So I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I hope you guys enjoyed and you share your work online. I can't wait to see it. Have a wonderful day. See you guys later. Bye.